everyone. Hello. I realize I forgot to um, schedule this one. So I'm going to give everyone who's joining in live a few minutes to get their notifications um, and to join in for our final episode of the mini puff jacket crochet along. Um, today we are going to be making and sewing on the pockets. So that is the goal for today because that's the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to be putting together. Um, and I did want to quickly show you guys, um, I did give y'all homework last time. So you had to finish up the last sleeve on your own, um, which I also did. Uh, so let's see. All right, so I'm going to show you guys, like I said, giving people time to join. Um, if you are just finding my channel, my name is Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design, and this is the, like I said, final episode uh, number 10. So we had 10 of these mini puff jacket crochet along episodes that you could make one along with me. Um, great for beginners if you're first learning how to do a pattern. This is the way to go because I walk you through step by step. Um, but I can show you guys. So here is the jacket. Like I said, no pockets yet since we're going to do that today. Hello, Emma. I'm glad you found me. Like I said, I completely forgot to schedule this one. So I know it can be a little more difficult to find when it's not scheduled and you can't be waiting for me to go live. Um, but like I said, the holidays have been crazy. I should have pre-scheduled them all, but I didn't know how long it was going to be. So, you know, it happens. Okay. So here is where we are at. I forgot this one. I did weave in almost all of my ends. I have these that I didn't see. And then I have these right here, these little guys that I need to weave in. Uh, but other than that, all of my ends are woven in, which is super exciting. Um, and this is what it looks like. So again, my belly button's right about here. So it's like just below that. Um, again, you can always add length to this one. You could just add more rows to the bottom border if you wanted to, even before you added pockets. So I like that these are pretty customizable and the fact that like you don't have to frog an entire piece to make adjustments. You could just add some length here and then add your pockets on the bottom. This will be great for me though. I like things that fit me right here. I can, my pockets will be in just the right spot. Um, and if it does stretch out a little bit over time, it'll be good. Sleeves just a little bit short, same reason. Um, you know, if it stretches out over time, it's not going to turn into super long sleeves. Um, and then for me, like I said, if I'm, for instance, wearing this around the house and I want to go wash my hands, I'm not having to work too hard to get them uh, pushed up onto my arm. So I'm not going to be getting them wet if I'm wearing them out, having to wash my hands, use my hands, all that kind of stuff. So super happy with how it turned out. My collar is a little more oversized because I added a few more rows to the front border here, um, which is always optional, especially if you want it to close a little bit more. This jacket tends to have a little bit of an open front. If you've got the pockets, it opens a little bit. So you can always add rows to the front to help combat that if you don't like that look. Okay, so it is time for us to get started on the pockets. And I am going to flip the camera around for the first part of the pocket so you guys can watch me make them in case anyone has questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then I'll probably flip it for the second pocket so you guys will see that one. And then I'll flip the camera again so that we can sew the pocket on together because that's something that I know people tend to be a little intimidated by is actually sewing things into place. If you don't have any basic sewing skills, um, it can help to just see it happening. Okay, so let me grab my pattern and let's see. And Jamie slipped this here. Hello, hello. Um, Let's see, I hope you guys are having a good start to your day. It's been a good start here. I've been working on some new things for January, which I'm super excited about because we've got a whole bunch of new things that we're going to be announcing and releasing in January that I'm really excited about. Um, one of which is actually the sweatshirt. I have not announced this one yet, so that's like sneaky peek. 
um, but this is a new design that will be coming out in January that I'm really excited about. So lots of fun things, lots of fun things happening. Okay, so I am on the final page of the pattern. Technically 10 hours later, a little bit longer because I had to finish that last sleeve outside of these. Um, and Thorn is here. Hello, Thorn. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, so the last page of the print instruction only pattern. So like I said, I don't print out the entire patterns for these. They are, they are very ink heavy. A lot of people use them on tablets, but I started doing the printer friendly versions, especially for these when I do the crochet alongs because I don't need all the pictures. Um, but we are about to start on the pockets. Okay, so I am following the second size. So I am gonna go ahead and highlight. See, I probably should have done this sooner but I like to go in and highlight the number that I'm following so that I don't forget where I'm at. Uh, so we are gonna do that real quick. So I am highlighting the second number throughout this entire section. So I would love to know if you guys are already planning things for Christmas. Um, what are your holiday plans? Are you traveling? Are you staying home? Are you having friends over? Is it traditional family? What are you guys going to be getting into later this week? I would love to know. Let's see. We had Christmas with my parents last weekend and it was actually really nice. Um, my relationship with my parents has not always been the best. I think we all have um, those kinds of situations with our families, but it feels like we are in a good place right now, which is awesome. I'm super thankful for that. Uh, so it's nice. It was a nice day, nice Christmas lunch. Um, and so very thankful for that. Okay. So feel free to chat with each other in the comments. Like I said, please share your Christmas plans. I would love to know what you guys are getting into for Christmas. Uh, last episode we talked about Christmas wish lists um, and if anyone is in the Facebook group if you want to share that this video is live in my Facebook group if you're able to do that um, you can I totally forgot to do that so there may be people who would like to join in and just don't realize that I'm live because I forgot to schedule it so if you guys want to share the link to this video in the Facebook group and people can come join in and have a chat with you guys uh, in the comments while I work on the pockets, uh, you can do that. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and flip the camera around. Like I said, I will catch up on comments uh, once I get this first pocket done, and then I'll probably work on the second pocket with it facing me so I can get through comments, and then I'll flip the camera around one last time and attach the pockets to the jacket. Uh, so there we go. All right, let me flip this around. Okie dokie. There we go. Oh, and I need to move the jacket so you guys can actually, let's see, maybe if I turn, oh, there we go. Just turn the light on. That will work just fine. Let's get y'all as close to the edge as we can so I can just work while I'm seated. Okay. Get that into place. All right. So this is where we are. All right, so I'm gonna work in this space but let's go ahead and look real quick at the instructions so we can walk through this together. Oh, and I did not highlight right here. And actually, okay, so here's another thing to keep in mind with this pattern, right? And I need to get a new, new pen. Let's see. Let's do this one. If you like large pockets, okay? So if you want your pockets to be roomier, you can always make a larger size pocket. So that's a super, I completely forgot to share that tip. I'm gonna do that. I want a larger pocket for mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the size up. So instead of following the second one, I'm gonna follow the third one. So I'm gonna go ahead really quick and underline <laughs> since I already went in and marked them. I'm gonna underline in blue the number that I'll be following. Okay. So I'm going to follow this one, and so I need a chain 14, 
And I will do this part little by little so you guys can actually see. There's, there's my... All right, same hook size. All right, so I'm going to chain 14. Yeah, chain 14. All right, so there's my chain of 14. Um, and I think I saw Thorne share the link in the Facebook group. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, and yes, please keep sharing your Christmas plans. I will catch up with those comments as soon as I am finished with this pocket, and I would love to hear what you guys are getting into. Um, okay, really quick note about um, the first, uh, first row into your chain. All right, so I've got my chain. Row one, after you've chained, after you've chained this number, um, you're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then continue to single crochet across the chain and then turn your work. All right. Here's where you have an option. All right. Anytime that I work across a chain, I like to work in what's considered the back bumps. Okay. So a lot of people, when they work, this is the first chain from the hook. This is the second. Most people will work into the V. So this is a V right here. Let's see if I can hold this like this. There's your V. And a lot of people will work into, if I can do it this way with the scissors, work into this back loop of the V as they go across. But I like to work into, if I flip my chain over, so here you can see the Vs. If I flip my chain over, there are these back bumps, okay, which are kind of hard to see with this yarn. But if we go underneath it with the scissors, it's right here. So this is your back bump. And here's the next one. If I can go underneath that. There we go. I am going to work into the back bumps for this one because that's how I like to work into my chains. For me, it tends to create um, a more uniform look to the chain. So I'm going to take my chain from this side. I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to work my first single crochet into that back bump. All right, and then I'm going to continue working single crochet stitches all the way across. Now, since I chained 14, that should be a total of 13 single crochet stitches in that first row. So sometimes when you're working into the back bump, it can take feeling for it or using your hands um, or your fingers to pull that uh, loop up. And for some people, maybe not. I know that's pretty normal for me if I'm working into those. I have to use a little leverage to get into that space. But it's like anything else with practice, it gets a little bit easier uh, if that's the, the way that you like to do that. Now, this is not a foundation chain. Some of you guys may have heard that term or used that uh, or seen that listed somewhere. Foundation chain is totally different. Uh, it actually creates your first row along with your chain. So it's a completely different technique. This is just another way to do a chain and your first row. So this is actually my first row after I made the chain. It's not all in one. All right, so I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Perfect. So 13 stitches. All right, so that was row one and it says I should have 13. I've got 13 so I can move on. Um, I had to turn my work. And then I'm going to chain one. So this is rows two through five. We're creating the bottom portion of the pocket. So let me draw this out real quick. So the pockets look like this. They're like a hoodie pocket. All right. And we are creating the chain down here and then we're working our way up. So rows two through five are this portion of the pocket where you're not going to be having any increases or decreases. All right. So let's do that real quick. So this is row two and we're just working single crochet. Thorne says my training as a chat host for online events takes over. Now I really appreciate it. 
um, and love the look of working into the back loop. I usually rage quit when I try. It definitely depends on the yarn that you're using. Um, this yarn, I would not recommend for a beginner to try to work into the back loop. Um, because like I said, it takes some time to really make sure that you can see exactly where that loop is. There have been times where I have tried it and quit and just gone with working into the V stitches because I couldn't find the back bumps or my chain got twisted. Um, it can happen. Um, it's a lot easier if you're using yarn that has a little more stitch definition, which this does not. Um, you know, the fuzziness and the variegation of the colors makes it a little bit harder to see. All right, so we are on row three. Uh, let me know if anyone in the chat it has been working on, um, has finished their mini puff. If you've already finished your pockets, let me know. I know um, someone, can't remember off the top of my head, shared their mini puff and didn't add pockets. So they wanted to leave it without pockets. So I'm interested to see if anyone's actually adding pockets to their jacket. Or if you are waiting to see how I add them first. Let me know. Oh, and let's do a fun one because I can, um, I'll have to catch up on the longer comments when I'm done. But I would love, let's do a quick, let's do some quick comments. So let me know if you have a favorite Christmas song. I've been asking this a lot across some of my social media channels. Um, I love to know what people's favorite Christmas songs are. I think it's fun because there's so many different types of Christmas songs. Um, you know, I have people who say they love, like, for instance, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra type music, and then some people who love, like, the classic Christmas songs. So let me know. What's your favorite Christmas song? All right, let's see, one, two, three, four. So this is row five. Abby is adding pockets, awesome. And Thorn says, Carol of the Bells, so heckin' beautiful. That is a good one. That is a really good one. Um, so I do also think that sometimes favorite Christmas songs uh, can be linked to memories. You know, I think a lot of us have that. Um, you know, I know, for instance, um, Oh, Holy Night, I, you know, I don't listen to it a lot, but my grandmother used to sing it to me and she had the most beautiful singing voice. And when I was little and I would visit them at their house, she would sing that one. So sometimes if I'm, if I hear that one, it makes me cry and makes me sad because it makes me miss her. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's row five. And I think, let's see, I'm going to add one more row. I want mine to be a little taller. So see, you can always do that, but you need to write down if you do it. So let's add one more. Uh, I feel like the only person who doesn't like Christmas songs, you are definitely not the only person who doesn't like Christmas songs. Um, I actually asked this on Instagram. And I had quite a few people who said, you know, they really didn't have, you know, have a favorite Christmas song or didn't enjoy Christmas music. Uh, and I think that's completely normal. Uh, I mean, it's a whole genre in itself of music and we don't all like all genres, you know, so I think that's pretty normal. Um, and I think too, if you like a specific kind of genre of music, if there's a Christmas song that's kind of in that genre, you can be a little more drawn to it. Okay, so I did six rows instead of five. And like I said, pro pattern tip, make sure you note that. So I did six rows here. All right, and I'm actually going to mark, let me get a stitch marker real quick. get myself a stitch marker and I'm actually going to mark row six with this because I did added an extra row here. I don't want to get confused if I start to count here. 
Uh, so when I start row six, which I'm going to chain one and single crochet 11 across. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one, turn my work and work my first single crochet. Once I work that first single crochet, I'm going to mark it with a stitch marker. All right, and then I'm going to say here, marked with stitch marker. All right, so that will just help me pay a little more attention without having to pay so much attention. <laughs> okay, so I have to work 10 single crochet stitches across. Abby says, I finished the body of my cardigan in two days. Yeah, I'm really not surprised. I'm actually working on a, uh, if you guys have seen my Weasley sweater, I'm making myself a Christmas sweater this year. Um, I really hope I can finish. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Is that right? Eleven. So I have to do eleven single crochet stitches. Now, uh, once I work eleven, I it says decrease. So you're going to work this number here, and then you're going to decrease. And a decrease, since you're working in single crochet, is going to be a single crochet decrease, which going to be insert your hook pull up a loop immediately insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through all the loops on your hook and that is your first single crochet decrease all right so I'm going to chain one and turn finish row six row seven I'm going to start with a decrease so let me pull this up here so you guys can see just a little bit closer so row six was 11 across and then a decrease and then you turn row seven is going to be chain one start with a decrease and then I'm going to be working 10 single crochet stitches across before I turn again all right so this is where this is starting to happen okay so when my work was turned this way, this is where I ended, ended on a decrease. I'm going to place another decrease right over this one. So I'm going to start to create an angle here. So insert my hook, insert my hook again, and there's my first decrease. And then I'm going to go ahead and work 10 more single crochet stitches. Three, four. Seven, eight, and little baby spooky bat says you didn't get the notification, and I forgot to um, I forgot to schedule it. So that's probably why a lot of you guys did not get notification. So that was my fault. So I am sorry. Um, definitely my uh, my fault there. Okay, and I am going to go ahead and mark these as I'm finished. So I'm in now on row eight. Yeah, printing out patterns can be super helpful or if you have the ability to use this on a tablet and mark things off, you can do a lot of different things on here to just help you keep track. Uh, Jamie says, I'm still here listening and holiday baking. What are you baking? Who else here bakes? Let me know if you make things for Christmas. Is there something special that you guys cook or eat for Christmas that's like a tradition? Let me know. My uh, grandfather, while he was still in uh, better health, made peanut brittle every single year. And I swear, you guys, it was the best peanut brittle I've ever had. Um, he is not at a point where he can make it anymore. It's so, it's such tedious work. I mean, like he would be in the kitchen all day working on that. And he had perfected the recipe over years. Um, so that makes me sad, but I'm so glad to have gotten to enjoy it for so long. So you can now really start to see this decrease happening right here. All right. And I marked this row because now I'm like, okay, I'm on the right row. I think I should have just finished row eight. Um, it started with row six here that I marked with a stitch marker. So this is six, seven, eight. So I am on row eight, um, moving on to row nine, which makes sense because row nine starts with a decrease and I just ended with a decrease. 
All right, so I'm going to turn my work and place another decrease right here at the beginning for row nine. All right, and then work single crochet stitches the rest of the way across. So my grandmother makes a whole bunch of different types of uh, Greek cookies for Christmas. And I think they're considered Greek wedding cookies, but she always made them at Christmas time. So that was always really cool. There were like three or four different kinds. So that was a tradition. All right, so that was row nine. Row 10. So I have 12 more rows before I tie off. Say 12 more rows. I have three more rows up to row 12. Uh, so I have a funny story about those cookies. Um, one, one of the types of cookies that she would make is like this flaky kind of sugar cookie. Um, but it has like these kind of layers baked in. It's really interesting, an interesting texture, but it was one that I really liked when I was little and it's covered in powdered sugar, like so much powdered sugar. And, um, you know, I obviously was not allowed to just eat however many cookies I wanted, but I knew where they were and they didn't try to hide them from us when we were little, you know, like they were out, they were just under, you know, like under tin foil or something, but they would be in the dining room. And so we would, you know, go sneak in and take cookies, <laughs> you know, whenever we wanted them, uh, even if we weren't supposed to have them. And I remember one time my parents were asking me if I had stolen some of the cookies if I had had cookies and I said no um, and I guess I had gotten powdered sugar all over the front of myself so yeah I wasn't getting around that one <laughs> okay so let's see this was seven eight nine ten eleven I have one more row before I tie off so it should be row 12 is that right Yes, one, well, let's see. I should have five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, so I'm going to mark these off. Two, three, four, and five. And then my final decrease. here. Okay. Yeah, that should be much better. The pocket's definitely wider. Now, if you want more of an opening here, um, I have seen people who have worked a border all the way around this. So instead of tying off here, they'll chain one and work a single crochet border all the way around which widens the entire piece out a little bit more. So that's an option. Um, or you could work another row up here if you just want this pocket to be a little wider here. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and tie off. Let's see, um, and I did leave a tip here at the bottom. Um, and not every size ties off here. So uh, after row 12, the first three sizes will tie off, but the rest of the sizes are gonna continue below. All right, now this can get confusing for some people, so I wanted to notate it here that the sizing changes, the, the list of the numbers changes here, okay? So if you are working a medium large, you are now the first number in front of the parentheses. This is how the sizes are listed out below. So if you're working a 3X, 4X, you're gonna be the first one from the inside of the parentheses. So the 3X, 4X would start with a decrease and then single crochet nine, okay? Medium large, Let's start with a decrease in single crochet five. So the way that this is written is how you will follow the rest of the instructions, okay? Same thing here. Medium, large, and XL tie off, but these four sizes continue. So XL slash 2X becomes the first size. So if you're highlighting your numbers, that's how you'll highlight those. 
Um, and winter, it's my fault that notifications failed. I did not, um, I did not put this, I did not um, pre-schedule this one. So that was my bad. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, you weren't the only one. <laughs> and hello, Lita D. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so here's a quick tip. Um, you can leave a nice long tail when you tie off here and use the tail to sew the pocket onto your jacket. Okay, so I will show you guys how I decide how much yarn I need. So that's another thing. Some people are like, okay, you're going to sew the pocket on. How much yarn do you actually need? Well, if you look at this, your seams are going to be everywhere but here because your hand has to go in this space. So you're going to work a seam across the top, down the side, across the bottom, and up this piece here. All right, so what I like to do is double the amount of yarn for the seam that I need. Okay, so I'm going to run my yarn across the top, down the bottom, across here, up, and then I'm going to turn it here, across the bottom again, back up, back around, and if I am at all concerned, just in case, I can do another half. So to here, and cut. Okay, now usually this is more than I need, but I'd rather have more than I need than too little and then have to use another whole set of working yarn to finish that. All right, so first pocket is completed. I am going to tie this off, which means I have to pull this nice long tail all the way through. Perfect. Woohoo. Okay, so the next pocket. I'm pretty sure the next pocket, yeah, we don't have to mirror image these. So we just get to make the exact same pocket again because we can flip them. The, the way that these stitches are, sometimes the stitches will look different if you're using a different combination. But since this is just single crochet, it's going to look the same either way. So we're going to repeat this entire piece one more time, which I'm going to flip this so that I can actually see what you guys are chatting about while I work on the second pocket and then I'll flip it around again when we attach the pockets. So let's do that. Whoop. Here we go. And let's see. I can make sure it's straight there. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and get my pockets started and then we're going to go back through. I'm going to see what you guys are chatting about. So Emma says, the headache is because my kids are all teenagers and very picky. It stresses me out. Um, I'm going to have to catch up and see what that's about. But I'm guessing it's probably either picking presents or eating food <laughs> of, of why they would be picky. Um, all right, let me start my counts. Two, three, four, six. Eight, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm chaining 14 for this other one, same as the last one. And I'm going to work into the back bumps. If I can find them. You guys can see it's not always the easiest thing to find these. And let's do, let's skip this back a little bit. Uh, Abby says I'm making the same size pockets as you. So I made a size up. Um, I'm chaining 14. Um, for these, I made the third size for the pockets instead of the second. So I followed the second one um, for that. Yeah, so you're chaining 14. And then uh, if you're making that one, the third size. And then I'm working into those back bumps for uh, 13 stitches. So 13 single crochet stitches across the chain that you made. And then I should actually be able to like talk and crochet at the same time. Oh, so I have been working on, I did want to share with you guys. Um, I know I showed you guys the books, the journals that are going to be releasing uh, in January. Um, which is the Pattern Tester Journal and the Pattern Designer Journal, which will be meant 
to help you um, track your tests and track your designs. So if you're designing or testing, uh, you'll be able to use them, which I think it's really just if you're the type of person who still likes to write things down and keep like journals and logbooks, that's who these are for. You know, this is for someone who wants to have a logbook that they can go back through and remember the designs that they made that year or the tests that they did that year and have it all in one little journal that they can put up on their shelf. Um, and you could purchase one each year. Like that could be, I'm going to fill out one journal each year and I'm going to complete, uh, I think it's 13 tests that you can complete or 10 designs. So, you know, I'm going to release 10 designs this year and they're going to be in this journal. So I think that could be pretty cool. Um, uh, but I'm also working on a planner. So I've been using, and let me know if you guys are planners. Do you own planners? Do you have like a physical planner that you write things in? Um, I think what's interesting about planners is it really shows how different our brains work because there are so many different types of planners out there and they're not all for everyone. So I realized um, probably in college there is one planner that I use religiously because it works for my brain. The way that it's laid out, I love the way that it's laid out. It just makes sense. It's really simple, but the space that I need is in all the right places. And it's just a simple like weekly layout. So it's got space for each day on one page and then it's just got an open notebook on the next page. So it's like a flat open and I'll show you guys, let's see. Okay, so this is the planner that I use. So it's got each day here, but then this is completely open. So I can just have a list of things that need to need to happen um, on that side, but the other one can be specific things happening each day. But that's the only kind of planner that, that just makes sense that I'll really use, and I really use it all the time. Um, and, but I, I really wanted to make something similar to that, but with more space for crochet stuff. So um, I wanted to have like a month, a break, a breakdown each month before it goes into each week. So like each month I can have like goals for the month. Then it goes into like the opening where it's week by week. Um, I don't need a daily breakdown. Um, this would not be that kind of planner. Those end up being so long and I just don't end up using them. Um, I just needed week by week. I didn't need like a reflection journal. I wanted it to be pretty simple of like, this is a functional daily use planner, but there's going to be space at the beginning for yarn stash, project planning for the year. There's going to be a monthly breakdown for planning out projects each month. Um, and then it will have the kind of weekly layout that I love. So it's just adding a little bit more to it. Um, that's in testing. And I plan to do a digital version that's got more options. So the digital version, you could do a daily check-in. It's going to have like a daily reflections page with that kind of stuff on there. So if that's your choice, or you can do a weekly layout, or you could do both. Um, it has a place for birthdays and special events. And again, hooks, hooks, hook stash, yarn stash, um, abbreviations, UK to US terms, yarn weights, things like that. So really excited. Um, I think it's going to be good. It's, it's a little different from what's out there because most of the stuff out there really is just a focus on project planning, um, not on just daily functional planner use. So really excited about that. And I'm going to have a, like I said, a digital version and a print version. And the digital version will obviously be, like I said, more, um, customizable as to how you want to lay it out. If you're printing it out, you can print out whatever you need, but then the hardcover obviously will be a little more limited and, um, you know, not being able to be as customizable, but I'm trying to figure out the best things to have. So that's kind of in testing and I'm hoping to have it ready to release, uh, before January. So like in the next week or so, be on the lookout. If you're a planner person and you want to try it, um, I'll have the digital version ready first, most likely, and then the hardcover very soon after. But both of them I'm planning to have available before the new year. Um, okay, so I did want to go back through. Um, let's see. Oh, 
Oops. I wish it would let me keep the chat up. Let's see. All message are visible. Mm -hmm. And actually, let me see. I'm going to do what I did last time. And I'm going to pull this up on the iPad so I can actually, because it's already, come on. I can actually see what everybody's chatting about. YouTube. Not even logged in on here. I just have to search myself. Okay. Here it is. All right. So now I can pop this chat out. And here we go. It doesn't want to stand up, does it? Come on, help me out here. Does that work? Okay. Okay, now I can actually see what is happening. Um, so Thorns is after Christmas, I'm going to a Bigfoot retreat with a couple of friends. My friend came up with the whole thing and said it's for believing in ourselves like Bigfoot. That's awesome. So is this like you guys are just doing this on your own? Is this actually an event that you're attending? That's like, that's an event or did you guys come up with it yourselves? Uh, Emma says, I'm going to crochet amigurumi for my brother's partner's nephew. She commissioned it. Oh, that's nice. What kind of amigurumi? If you're still on here, Emma, let me know. Um, Jamie says, despite the fact that my parents have been divorced since I was three, I split the holidays between the two Christmas Eve with dad and Christmas day with my mom. So double the dinner. Well, and I think if you can make the best of it, that's the most important thing. Like I said, you know, my relationship with my parents has not always been the best. Um, but I also know how it feels to set that boundary and not spend time with them for a while to kind of say, this is, this is the boundary. This is how I feel. Um, but now that we've done that, I feel like our relationship has gotten better. So it really is just making the best of the situation if it's at all possible. Um, and it's better for you. It's better for, for everybody in that case. Um, Emma says, currently knitting a sweater and bulky yarn. I'm waiting to hear from my brother. He's in the hospital with his girlfriend who's having a baby. Can't wait to see my niece. Well, that's exciting. I hope everything goes, it goes as well as it can. Because <laughs> I know that can be crazy. Um, Lauren says, oh, I already read those. Let's see. Emma says, roadkill Christmas is my favorite. I haven't heard that one. That's a Christmas song. Okay. It's not saying I got run over by a reindeer because that's roadkill, right? <laughs> All right. How many rows do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six rows, which is where I placed my stitch marker last time. So I'm going to replace my stitch marker because I added that extra row. Um, oh, I was going to place it on row six. Well, row seven. All right. So I have to start this row first which is I'm starting with single crochet stitches. So I'm going to place my stitch marker in the first one. So I know that that is row six technically because I added one before that. Ooh. This doesn't want to stay up. Okay. Lauren says, I agree about that. I was going to say, Oh, Holy Night, because my mom loved that one, makes me cry too for various reasons. Um, definitely have a complicated relationship with my parents and Christmas things in general. Uh, I wrote a cello and other stuff arrangement of O Come, O Come in a sheet music program. Love the result of that one. My church at the time even played it for part of the program. That's really cool. Um, my computer performed it, but they played the recording. That's really neat. I like that. Um, 
working on a graph gan right now, but love having the company. Agree. Abby says, I'm a very fast crocheter, but could never make a graph gan. Um, and you totally could. You totally could. I think anyone who says they couldn't make anything, like, don't sell yourself short. You can. It just takes practice. Starting with something small, starting with something simple. Um, but you totally can. I mean, I know for the longest time I thought I would never make clothes, and now that's all I make. So <laughs> it's just finding... Um, you know, a designer that you like or a pattern that you enjoy that, that really breaks it down easily. If you like to follow videos, you know, finding a video instead of a written pattern can be super helpful. Um, but you definitely can. All right. Row seven. Start with that decrease. So now I should be able to kind of be on autopilot. We'll see. Um, not working with bulky yarn, uh, for the graph cans this thorn, but very squishable. That's the most important part. Uh, and says, Abby, it takes a certain kind of patience, definitely patience, but you can totally do it. Uh, Jamie says, I'm still here listening in holiday baking. Oh, he's asking about baking. Uh, Thorne says, I have a question about scheduling. Is there a way to automate the live notifications? A lot of people put them out. 30 minutes before on the dot. So I'm going to have to look into it, but um, usually I pre I pre schedule the actual video, um, which I think allows it, people to let let it does the notifications. I think the problem was that um, I just went live. Like I didn't have any, I went live as soon as I was supposed to go live with, you know, no pre scheduled anything. So I think that's what screwed it up. I think I can. Uh, I have to look into if there's a way to send out multiple notifications or to time it, um, because that would be helpful if it's possible for sure. Thorne says I'm getting into baking. Abby says I love to bake. I just finished making a gingerbread cheesecake. Now, is this like a tra super traditional cheesecake with like the, the cheesecake pan and all of that? Cause that's something I've never done. So I've done the kind of like no bake cheesecakes or, um, where it's already got like the crust and it's more like a pie, like a cheesecake pie, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I have not ever used like a spring pan to make one. And Emma says that she likes making gingerbread. And glad you have the memories of good times with your grandpa. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we're going to try to go see them this year. It'll be after the holidays. They're actually going to spend um, the time right after Christmas and New Year's in Florida, which will be, I think, great because um, they live north of me. So it gets really cold and they're, they're not going to get outside, you know, so I think that will be really nice. And then when they get back, we're going to try to go see them and do a late Christmas in January. So we'll exchange gifts and everything. But I really wanted to be able to exchange gifts in person even if it's late, you know. <laughs> Emma says, the only thing I get traditionally is a headache. Oh. Um, let's see. And yeah, darn sugar gave me away. Yeah, when I was sneaking the powdered sugar cookies. Abby says, I'm 13 and I don't really like sweet stuff. I always thought it was weird for not liking that kind of thing. And it's it's definitely not. I can't eat a lot of sugar just for health things. Um, my body doesn't like it very much. Uh, I do like it, um, but I have to I have to watch it, which, you know, it's been so long since I've eaten a lot of sugar that it I, it's easier. It's pretty easy to say no now because there's other things that I like that I can eat instead. Um, yeah, Winter said, I have all the notifications turned on for your channel, but YouTube didn't care. Uh, I should have been notified that the stream had started. I thought YouTube notified when the live is actually on. And that's what I, I don't know why it was being weird. I've heard people say that it's done that to them before. Um, but I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you joined. 
Let's see. And Emma says the headache is because my kids are teenagers and very picky. So that was why you said traditionally you only get headaches. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure it's about everything. I'm sure it's Christmas shopping and gifts and eating and all of that. Um, it's not the easiest time of year for a lot of people, you know. Um, and that's why we have friends and we have Friendsgivings and friend Christmases and um, like this year we did a Friendsgiving after Thanksgiving where we had friends over and, you know, did a second Thanksgiving, which was great. Uh, and then we did, uh, we're planning on having our, having like a New Year's Eve thing here after we do like a family Christmas, we'll have friends over for New Year's. So that should be really nice. Let's see. Winter says that's neat making pockets like that for my cardigan pattern, but I got annoyed trying to make the ends rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, Winter saw the kitty. Yeah, I don't know where he went. Oh, he's just back here loafing. He's doing doing the cat loaf over here on the carpet. Uh, little baby spooky bats has been so cold lately. Um, seasonal depression is real. I like the videos because it makes me feel like I'm part of something. Definitely. Um, I mean, that's, you know, I think this year, this time of year, if you're not getting out and about um, to do much of anything, it's very, very helpful, um, you know, to have something like this where you can chat with each other or communities or anything like that. I think it's really nice to have that for sure. Me too. I mean, you know, I probably won't go live again. I say that I probably won't go live until the new year, which is almost here. Um, but I look forward to it. You know, I like getting to connect with you guys and see what y'all are up to. Um, Thorne says they're doing the ears of annoyance. I have the same, Abby says the same measurements as you, so I just follow along. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect, Abby. Uh, Thorne said lives are really great for that. Mm -hmm. Winter says I have 10 planners, but I don't use them. Totally understand that. And that's why I said it took me finding the right one. So once I found the one that was super helpful for me, then I actually used it. So, uh, but it took some figuring out. Okay, finish my second pocket. First pocket, second pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie off. I'm gonna make uh, the same length of a tail for this one that I did for the other one. And then we'll be ready to sew these things on. So, cut my ends. I have two ends now. Go ahead and tie this one off. All right. Okay, pockets are ready. I'm gonna take this little stitch marker out. I'm gonna grab a few more stitch markers to help me sew them on uh, so you guys can see how I do that. And let's see. When cats put their ears back like that, they're annoyed. It's just a term I made up. Got that. That's what I figured it was, the ears of annoyance. Um, sign of aggression or fear. Let's see. And Thorne says, okay, I learned something. Yeah, definitely. Um, Thorne says, I use Kanban board online. Should get back to it, though. And Winter says, Thorn, I know everything about cats, everything ever. How many cats do you have, Winter? Let me know. You have multiple cats or just one cat? Sometimes all you need is one and you can still know everything about them. You may not even have any and still know everything about them, which would be pretty cool. Alita says, I used a planner every year in college. We don't need more since now all I do is work. I had to have one for work. I had two for work, actually, when I was working full time. <laughs> um... Let's see. Little Baby Spooky Bats. I want to be a planner girl, but what works for me is a little whiteboard across from my bed. It makes me what I do stuff so I can just erase the to-do list. That's true. I mean, it's it's figuring out what works for you. It's what works for your brain. All of our brains work different. If you tell 10 different people to make an Excel spreadsheet for the same thing, they're going to put it together completely different. They're going to put the columns in different places, the rows in different places, the information in different places because our brains work differently. Uh, Winter says, I've been drinking so much cocoa lately. Uh, and Thorne says, I'm interested in the digital version. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'll, as soon as it's ready, it'll be, I'll put it in the Facebook group for sure. Uh, 
the cocoa is great. Let's see. Simple and easy cooking with Hina. Hello, friend. I'm your new friend. Well, hello, simple and easy cooking with Hina. Uh, let's see. I decided I'm getting dino nuggets for Christmas dinner this year. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I crocheted one too many rows, and once I counted, I didn't think, and just frogged the whole row and didn't realize I only needed to frog two stitches. Ah. Thorn, after many years of not getting safe foods for Christmas, I needed this so much. Mm-hmm. Amy Groomy is a strange character from a kid show called Charlie Color World or something. I know what it looks like anyway. Roadkill Christmas is by Jeff Dunham. I should have thought of that. I'm sure I've read, I've, I'm sure I've actually heard it now that you say that. <laughs> Um, well, hello from India, Hina. I can read your messages. Um, just finally making it through the chat. Made my most, most Christmas presents, only the brother and roommate left. I want to make slippers and a hat. That won't be too bad. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to get it done quickly. Um, this is the gingerbread cheesecake I talked about earlier. Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see uh winter says i used to have three but i don't anymore cats are a special interest of mine though um yeah he not we're just here to crochet and chat I'm definitely not here for tips or anything so <laughs> okay let's flip this over and let's attach these pockets because we only have a few minutes left and i want to make sure uh if anyone uh, especially if you guys are watching the replay, that you can see how I do this. Because I know that this can be, like I said, uh, an intimidating part of the process if you have never added pockets before. I may only have time to add one pocket. We'll see where we're at. But if I can clean up my space a little bit. All right, I'm going to start by, if I can find the top of my jacket. Okay. Let me move this up a little bit too for you guys. All right. So I'm going to lay my jacket out flat like this. So if I move the jacket down, you can see here's the collar. And I'm just laying it out as flat as I can, the sleeve. And then I'm going to move it back up so you can see where I'm at. Now, I like to line up the jacket as so. And then I like to place the pockets right where they need to be. Like I said, it's a little harder to see here because I didn't use contrasting color for the pockets. So it's going to blend in a little bit. But I'm just lining up the edges, right? And now I'm gonna pin everything in place, okay? And you can be as meticulous or as not meticulous as you like for this. It will work out just fine and you will have lovely pockets. <laughs> but I'm gonna grab a few more of my stitch markers. Now let's use yellow ones on here so they'll stand out a little bit more. And I'm gonna place the four corners first. So I'm going to find the very bottom piece here and I'm going to place the stitch marker through the bottom section and then through the top. Now, if you don't have stitch markers, you can use a piece of contrasting yarn and just slip the yarn through and tie one, not a knot. If you can tie a bow or you can just um, loop over and tie the first half of the double knot so that you can just undo it real quick. Um, but these stitch markers work great. Now you can, if you're concerned and you want to super, super line things up, you know that there's, you can count your rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 rows, okay? So I can actually come over here and count, let's see, if I flip this down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that actually feels a little high, so I'm not going to do it that way. Let's see. We're just going to line this up flat. And then once it's flat, 
I can flip it up this way and see that these two stitches line up the best here. So I'm going to go through the top stitch and the bottom stitch and line that up. And then you can just check and make sure that you can kind of squish it together and make sure there's not going to be any puckering that's going to lay nice and flat. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll go through the bottom first. And this makes the process a lot easier if you get everything in place first, for sure. All right, so I'm going to flatten this out. Find the stitch that lines up with that one the best. Go through the top and bottom. So now those are all matched up. Now it's harder to do that in this corner, so I'm not going to do that in the top corner, um, but I'm going to come down here to the bottom. And again, I'm just going to make sure everything's lined up nice here and find the stitch on the bottom that lines up best with the pocket. And place another marker there. And same thing over here. Okay. So let's sew this pocket on first. So I'm going to find the end of my yarn here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a tapestry needle. All right, I'm going to use one of our flexi needles. So these are our flexible tapestry needles that we 3D print. So they're a lot better for like the bulkier yarn and if you're having to kind of finagle your stitches a little bit. Um, so there we go. All right, so I'm gonna start here and go around this way, All right? Now, if I'm trying to line everything up, you can see, so most of my pocket is going to be on my front border because my front border is so long, right? If the front border had been shorter, then I could kind of line up. You see how this is kind of creating a ridge? That line could help me make sure that my pocket is nice and straight, but um, I don't really have a lot of a reference point there, so I just kind of get to go with it. So the way that I do this is considered um, like a basting or a tacking stitch is what it's called uh, in sewing. So I'm going to take my string and I'm going to work straight into the body of the jacket just above here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that through. So that creates my first point of um, first stitch point here. So that's going to be attached. Now I'm going to flip my yarn, I mean my project over, and so I can see where this is coming out. I want to make sure I don't go back into that same space. I'm going to go into the space next to it, closer to the edge of the jacket. So I'm going to go straight through there. I'm not going to go into the pocket. I'm just coming up through the back of the jacket. And then from there, I'm going to come through the first stitch of the pocket. So this is that first stitch on the top, and I'm going to come through that stitch. Now I'm going to go through the next stitch on the pocket, just the stitch on the pocket. And then I'm going to pull this down, see where my last stitch came out of the jacket and go into the next stitch space next to it. Pull that through. Okay. Flip it over again. See where that's coming out. I'm going to go into the next stitch over just through the jacket. And then I'm going to go through the next stitch from back to front of the pocket. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch front to back of the pocket, just the pocket. Pull down, see where that last stitch came out over here in the jacket, go into the next space available in the jacket. I have to make sure that my yarn isn't getting closed up. But now you're creating this really great strong seam through both of these. And you don't have to question whether or not 
It's actually going through both because you're taking your time to do it one at a time. All right, so this is where it came out. I'm going to go in to the next space so that I've actually got something to grab onto. Pull it through the jacket and then go back to front through the next stitch of the pocket. And then front to back in the next stitch of the pocket only. And you can kind of pull that tight if you need to. Flip it up, find the next space over in the jacket. Flip. Now you are to the point where you're gonna be working through the first this first stitch space in the edge of the jacket so I'm going to go through that and then go through the space marked by the stitch marker back to front in the jacket pocket okay now the next part's easier um, because you can actually see the seam here so I'm going to turn this so I can actually see where I'm working into and for this you can actually go through the pocket edge and through the edge of the jacket, just like that. Whoops, again, yarn is getting caught on itself. There we go. So you can do that. And then from here, you go in to the next stitch down here and through the pocket. Same thing, next one, next stitch. You can kind of pull that tight if you need to. And it's just taking your time, don't rush. There we go. I know this one's going to go over, but I definitely want to get the first pocket completed so you guys can see that and you'll be able to repeat that process on your own. And our jackets will be finished, which is super exciting. And like I said, I definitely want to see your finished jacket. So if you're finishing that up and you have not joined the Facebook group, definitely join. I would love to see your finished mini puffs. All right, so I'm at the very edge here, the bottom. I'm gonna go through, again, go through the pocket and the body of the jacket. All right, make sure that's tight. From here, you can check it. So you can put your hand in there, push against the seam, run your hands along it, make sure that you can't stick your fingers through. Like I can stick my finger through here. Let's see. I think I may have missed, did I miss something? I don't think I did. No, there are gonna be some spaces where you can do that just cause it's bulkier yarn. Okay, so the bottom is the same way. It's a lot easier cause you can actually see what you're doing. Now, another way to do this, so we came out this way um, you can do a back and forth where, so I'll show you real quick. So I'm going to go, this was the first stitch. I'm going to go into the second stitch of the, the pocket of the jacket and then into the first stitch of the pocket. So you can do this diagonally and then go into the second stitch of the pocket and back into this second stitch of the jacket. And then next stitch of the jacket, but back into the same stitch of the pocket that you just worked into. And then the next stitch of the pocket, back into the same stitch of the jacket that you just worked into. So this is another way to do your seam that can actually create an even um, uh, more heavy duty seam. Okay, so that's another option. So I'm gonna go in the next stitch of the jacket and into the last stitch of the pocket. So it's kind of diagonal back and forth. So I'll do this all the way across. Now there's really no wrong way 
um, to sew these pockets on. There's just different techniques. Um, you'll find the technique that you like the most, um, that you understand the best, and that, you know, you actually enjoy. You know, so I think it's just, you know, you can look up other sewing techniques. Um, there are some people who will try to stitch it together, especially around the edges. You could do that with like a single crochet or slip stitch if you wanted to try. Um, but you'd have to figure out something else for the sections that are on the actual jacket and not on the edge. Make sure this is nice and tight so you can just kind of pull that together. You could also do like a mattress style stitch down the sides if you wanted to, but like I said, you would have to um, use some kind of other technique for the sections that are actually attached on top of the jacket, not on the edges. All right, we are at the bottom corner. So for this one, I'm going to go straight through, all right. Now for the very last section, and now you have two different types of techniques you can try for the other sleeve. You see which kind you prefer. Now from here, I'm actually going to go from here back into the jacket this way just to stabilize. I want an additional stitch in that corner. So you could do a couple stitches in each corner if you want to. Um, but from here, I'm going to do the same technique I used at first. So I came out of this first space. I'm going to go into the next space over just through the jacket first. And then I'm going to go into the next space of the pocket from the back side to the front and then front to back. And then find the next space in the jacket. And then flip, find the next space in the jacket, and then go through the next space in the pocket. Next space in the pocket, and then into the jacket. All right, there we go. Hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, if you have never put pockets on before, I hope it does not feel as intimidating now if it did, because um, that's definitely my goal. I don't want you to feel intimidated by any of my designs. I promise you can do it. All right, last one. All right, so I went front to back on the final stitch of this corner, but I am going to place another stitch again, just to make sure that this stays nice and tight here. So I'm going to do the same thing I usually do. I'm going to find where that came through. I'm going to go into a stitch over past it, come back up through here, and I'm going to go back through the corner. Back to front. And then I can do one more. I can go back into the body of the jacket to pull that through and secure that. And then I'll be able to tie, weave these ends in. And I had plenty of yarn left. I can weave these in, make a knot. Um, but our pocket is now in place. All right. So I'm going to take these stitch markers out. And we are going to check this pocket out for ourselves so we can see it. And we aren't too far behind. Okay, so big reveal. Let's see how these look. And like I said, I have not obviously have not sewn on the other pocket yet. Uh, so I've got a nice long tail and stitch markers holding that one on. But we can see how this first one looks. 
Okay. So we can see, let me move this back. There we go. All right, so we can see this is the pocket that is now attached. There is the one that is just attached by a couple stitch markers. Um, but I absolutely love the size. So like I said, I made a bigger pocket than what was listed for my particular size, uh, but I wanted to have a larger pocket for my hand. Um, my first pockets felt a little small for, for me, um, and I think this is a nice way to, to set that off. Um, but there we are, mini puff, almost complete. All you have to do is sew on this next pocket. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, enjoyed the live. Um, like I said, um, I don't know when my next live will be yet. Um, we'll see, we'll see how the holidays go. We'll see if there's anything specific that I want to cover. Um, obviously at some point we'll do another crochet along, um, but I would love to just have some nice topic chats while I work on different, um, projects that I've got going on. Cause I do have probably the most like pieces that I'm working on right now that I've had in a long time. Um, so it'd be nice to just be able to come on and work on them and we can pick a topic um, to chat about. I'm actually gonna make sure I didn't have any more chats. Um, I'm so glad you like it. Thanks guys. And Abby finished sewing on the first pocket. Yay! All you have left is the other one. Promise you can do it. I can't wait to see pictures. Um, if you're in the Facebook group, Abby, I would love for you to share. I'd love to see your finished piece. Um, and Winter says, I love the bulkiness of the yarn. Camouflages the sewing. Definitely camouflages the sewing much better. Um, so you can do a lot of different things. Um, looks like the Insta pics, but messier. Uh... Let's see. I know I'm going to miss a lot of these, um, so I won't be able to go through everything. I'll have to look through the live comments later. Um, let's see. Winter says yay for upper arm flower tattoos. Yeah, that's my, that's my favorite. One day it'll have more, more things in there. Um, uh, it says mine's three red peonies. That's probably absolutely beautiful. Um, and like I said, I'm glad you guys like the shape. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and I would love to see yours. And Abby, if you search Pink Sheep Design on Facebook uh, under groups. So, um, and I think there's a link in the, in the about section of this video too, to the Facebook group. Um, but if you search pink sheep design and click on groups or communities, whatever it's called, it should pop up. It's just pink sheep design, Facebook group, super simple. Um, and yeah, that's it guys. Well, thank you again for joining in. Um, I'm not going to be live this Friday, probably not going to be live next Tuesday. Um, but I will share in the Facebook group and I will, um, do an actual schedule for the next live that we have. Um, here on YouTube together. And I would love if you guys let me know, I'll probably do a poll in the Facebook group, um, but what you guys want to chat about, because I want to go back to kind of the tip Tuesday or just the chat Tuesday where we pick a topic and we get to talk about it together. That's always been really enjoyable, um, especially for anyone who's not following along when we do um, the crochet alongs. So, um, and yeah, the need more tattoo feeling. I think a lot of us know that well. One of these days, it will be time to continue to get them. <laughs> but thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful holiday season, whatever it is that you're doing. I hope you can find some time to, re to rest and relax, that it's not all super stressful. Take time for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Um, give yourself grace and space. Um, and I'll see y'all soon. Happy hooking. Bye, guys.